I'm not a um, this isn't going to be a a pro Honeywell or a pro Johnson Controls class. Um, I'm actually going to have a lot of Johnson Controls slides in here towards the end of after my presentation. Um, but Honeywell just made that video, and obviously I want to show it to you. So don't think you're going to get you know spoon fed a whole bunch of one manufacturer or the other. Um, it's a uh, it's just a neat video. All right, so basically. Um, What is the purpose of this class? Um, to offer a ground up approach to the fundamentals of DDC. The reason that's important is because um, with me what always happened is when I tried to learn this stuff about two or three years ago, um, everybody had a, a much you know, deeper knowledge of, and understanding of DDC than me and it's really hard to dumb it down to somebody that just can't you know, grasp the, the bare roots bottom part of it and that was what I struggled with. So everybody would start at step four or five of a ten step process and I'd be lost. The whole point of this class is I don't want any of you guys to feel that way. So I'm going to start at the very, very, very basic and build from there. So some of you may be remedial as we're first getting going and, and hopefully we'll catch up to you. If you're programming and if you're um, you know out and installing this kind of stuff, this may be a, a review for you. I hope not, um, but this is an introductory class. <clears throat> um, what we're going to cover is an uh, overview of digital controls, basic terminology, how devices communicate across a network, introduction of various communication protocols, examples of a few different types of hardware, we've got these around the room, um, benefits to an end user and a contractor. All right, first guinea pig of the day, who wants to give a shot? What does DDC stand for? Direct digital control. Got it. That's my man right here. Direct digital control. The long definition. The automated control of a condition or process by a digital device. The automated control of a condition or process by a digital device. The reason that I underline those two words automated and digital devices because that is what it has to be. Automated. I'm not going to walk over and press a button and then go sit back down for 30 minutes, let it do its thing, then hop up again and go press another button. Once I program it, once I tell it what it needs to do, it does it seamlessly in the background and it does it without me doing anything. Digital device. There's no moving parts inside of this stuff. Okay, there's no, there's no air, there's no Compressors, there's no nothing. It's a it's a computer, okay? So it's a digital device. Little microchips and processors and all that kind of good stuff. I like to add that it will also communicate. Now, a few years back, the uh, you may not have had of it wasn't too long ago that there wasn't front end and, and, and a JACE and stuff like that to tie all this kind of stuff together. So things didn't communicate, but they were still doing DDC. These days, if you're going to do DDC, it's going to communicate. Um, and we're going to get into why, but that's another thing that, that I think we definitely need to, to add to it. Once you have those three things in place, you're doing automation. Okay? BAS, who wants to give it a shout? This guy's, this guy's making you guys look bad. Good job. The uh, building automation system. So don't get DDC and building automation system confused. DDC is the product and the, the programming and that type of stuff. Once you install it into a building and program that building for what you want, then you have a BAS system. So DDC is what you use for a BAS system. Does that make sense? So a computerized intelligent network of electronic devices designed to monitor and control HVAC, mechanical electronics, and lighting systems in a building. Can pull everything in. So why DDC in, in building automation? Lowers utility costs. Okay, we can go in and, and, uh, and, uh, and optimize your building with you know, special run time on certain units, less outside air bringing into your building, um, different things and, and the whole goal is to automate the entire process, make it more convenient for you and the people in the space, um, as well as lower your, your energy cost and that's, that's, that's the whole point of it, right? <clears throat> Increase productivity. Um, I could really spend 20-30 minutes on increased productivity and it's something that people just go yeah okay whatever and roll their eyes and just kind of move on about but if you think about it um, increased productivity if you guys are hot and, and it's, it's not in here you guys are freezing cold or you're hot in here you're not going to pay attention as well to this presentation you're not going to get as much out of it okay you're feeling good 
It's, it's increased productivity. That's important in places like you know work, but especially in schools, okay? Schools get um, compensation for attendance. So the higher attendance that they have, they're going to get grants and, and more money. So think about if you have a building that you're, you're, you've got the outside air that you're bringing in optimized, you're not, you don't have a sick building syndrome and, and it's, it's not too hot, not too cold, you're not spreading viruses on the crap around, well then you've got more people attending school, that's a heck of a way to get a good return on investment if you go and upgrade your facility, right? Reduces occupant complaints. This is actually kind of neat as well too. So think about if right now the air went out in the room. You guys, if you, unless you heard the compressor kick off, you wouldn't really uh, know that anything happened or that anything was wrong. Probably about 20, 30 minutes from now, I'd get a little stuffy in here and then somebody would be like, hey, you know, something's just not quite right. And it'd take about a good hour, unless we're in the dead heat of summer, for you guys to really say, hey, Rob, what's going on in here? Well, in a BAS system, it's using DDC, What's going to happen is whoever is monitoring the system is either going to get a text message or an email or the, the portal is going to flash um, in there and say, hey, there's a problem over in the training room. Somebody needs to go over and check it out. And so while we're sitting here having this class not knowing that there's anything wrong, there's somebody over there fixing the system and figuring out what it is before you guys ever even know that there's a problem. That's huge, okay? You guys, I'm sure some of you guys, um, you know, are... You get service calls and that type of stuff for the craziest things. Just think if we could just knock those down by 10, 15 percent. Okay, how much better your life would be, right? You guys would be going out and doing doing a lot more uh, stuff that you like to do, not going out and wondering why, you know, Lucy's room is too hot and and Jacob's too cold and whatever, right? <clears throat> Reduces maintenance costs. Simplifies building operation. Maintains measured comfort. DDC is very exact. It's going to get in there and it's going to do exactly what you want it to do. And you can go in and get a, you know, effective set points and, and lock out set point temperatures and stuff. Um, you can go in there and get it exactly how you need it to be um, for your customer or, or for yourself or you know, whoever. Um, that's huge. It's a great investment. Most systems pay for themselves in less than two years. Now I wrote this um, this PowerPoint presentation about a little over a year ago, and now there's a ton of energy rebates, um, government programs, you know that type of stuff. I would venture to say that this this statement that I have here is is probably a little out of date. Um, you, you a lot of times depending on how vast and big your system is, you can pay for this stuff in as little as six months, or sometimes even right away. Um, if you're a you know a small place like a church, something like that, um, you know there's there's tons of, of stuff out there for that kind of thing. All right, so how do they accomplish this? Controls, um, controls. You know you're looking at this is some of the older legacy stuff, but you know an XL15 and XL10. T7350, I'm sure all of you guys have seen these before. Um, but install these on your equipment in your space or your rooftop unit or whatever, and those are given a much more exact control. And we can network them together and have them talk to each other and share set points, make sure that they're not fighting each other, okay? Graphical operation, this is pretty neat. You kind of saw this a little bit in that video where they were looking at, you know, through an iPad, you saw the graphs and the, and the duct work and, and that type of stuff and, and the fans and, and all that. Um, you know, when you have this kind of system, um, you go in and see exactly, and I want to know what's going on. So you go in and you look at it and there it is. Well, there's your, there's your space temp in your room and your damper is this much open and um, you, know, you can see everything right from there and then get your alarms and everything else. Outside air optimization, scheduling, smarter control. Um, outside air is, you know, if you've got to pull outside air in. You got to. If you didn't, you know, you guys know this. This is this is remedial for you guys, but we'd all be sick and nasty and be breathing the air that we expelled yesterday, and that's just gross. So we got to bring in new outside air. If we didn't have to. Um, you know, it would be a lot less energy because we'd be just reconditioning the same air that we've already conditioned, but it's bad. So with, with 
a, a system that's set up the right way, you can reduce how much outside air that you're bringing in still without getting yourself sick and all the nasty stuff that comes from it um, and actually have a, you know, a lot less you know, energy bill. Scheduling is great. So if I just had you know, each one of these controllers that are over here and they just stood alone and did whatever they wanted by themselves, well, they would probably still work pretty darn good, but if I can get those things to network together and talk to each other so that they're not fighting each other, running on one schedule, you know, Stromquist is open from 7 a.m. to um, to 6 p.m., but we had a guy here at 5.40 this morning, right? We want to go ahead and get that stuff down, so we went into our system yesterday and we set up, you know, our schedule for the training room and, and lighting and that kind of stuff to come on, you know, before we even got here this morning. So we walk in and boom, everything's going. Okay, super neat stuff. If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist and Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy to use online ordering platform, same day shipping, and a factory trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist and Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products.